Hello, I'm Jonathan Newton, a principal engineer at Vodafone and also the project stream lead for Axis Architecture at the Broadband Forum. This is a short introduction to an exciting work item currently under definition at the Broadband Forum called Subscriber Session Steering. As way of introduction, if we look at the traditional broadband access network, we have access nodes that connect customers to the network and service gateways, such as the broadband network gateway, that authenticate and connect individual customer sessions to the right services. The connectivity in the middle between the access node and the broadband network gateway is generally very static, where subscribers on a particular access node are mostly connected to the same BNG, with the decision and configuration being done only when the network is first deployed, or perhaps when it's upgraded. Against this background, we're all becoming increasingly dependent upon our broadband, with home working, home learning and entertainment putting more emphasis and requirements onto the broadband network. And this relatively static part of the network can start to become a problem. Edge compute use cases and services are emerging that require connectivity to service locations that are located closer to the customer than normal to reduce the latency between the end user and the service. Operators need to perform maintenance activities and upgrades more frequently to react to customer bandwidth growth and new service needs. Virtualization of functions such as the BNG enables capacity to be deployed on demand, but it can then be slow and complex to connect existing customers to this new capacity. And then there's the underlying need to continue to improve energy efficiency, better matching the energy consumed by the network to the actual load at any point in the day. In Working Text 474, the Broadband Forum is defining an architecture and data models for a standardized capability that supports dynamic real-time decisions about the placement of each individual subscriber session in the network. In effect, creating a load balancing and service selection capability right at the ingress to the broadband network. If you look at the darker colored boxes in this diagram, we show the existing elements of the access network, such as the residential gateway and the access node. Also, the service gateway, which is a generic term to identify any gateway for connecting subscribers to the required services, such as the disaggregated broadband network gateway, which is also defined by the broadband forum. The new functions introduced by this work are shown in light green. These are the access session detection function, which has the job of identifying that a new subscriber is connected to the network, the user plane selection function that is responsible for making the real-time decisions as to which service gateway and which user plane the subscriber should be connected, and the traffic steering function, which is the role of actually forwarding the subscriber traffic to and from the identified service gateway user plane. Importantly, there's no requirement in the architecture for these new functions to be implemented in new or dedicated equipment. And it may well be that the traffic steering function can be part of existing access nodes or aggregation switches, and the control plane of the TSF and the user plane selection function could well be implemented as part of an STN control layer, such as defined in the broadband form cloud central office architecture. Or alternatively, they could just be dedicated software functions. Here, we give some example use cases that can be enabled by the new architecture. We've split them into those that relate to service differentiation and innovation, and those that relate to network operation. In the services area, the architecture enables use cases such as connecting a customer on demand to an edge services location that can then deliver the required end user experience for a low latency service, or connecting sessions that relate to a particular service type, such as IoT or healthcare, to specific service gateways, perhaps a dedicated enterprise service for home workers. It could also enable customers to opt in to an innovation slice of the network where new services are beta tested without impacting the network as a whole. In the operations area, the architecture allows for the automated load balancing of subscribers and their traffic across the network. Importantly, allowing the balancing to be updated automatically after the addition of new capacity. It allows for subscribers to be automatically moved away from network elements that are marked for maintenance and can even enable a continuous deployment approach for upgrades where elements of the network are drained and upgraded in turn in an automated manner. Lastly, it can enable power optimization by rebalancing subscribers onto a smaller number of user plane elements when demand is low, such as overnight. So in summary, 
Subscriber session steering under Working Text 474 is well underway. We're standardizing a more flexible and dynamic access network. It enables a wide variety of use cases that bring benefits to both the service provider and their end customers. And more use cases are emerging all the time. Finally, Broadband Forum is an open organization, so it's very straightforward if you want more information or you would like to get involved with this work. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jaswinder Singh. I'm software engineer with Network Platform Group in Intel. In this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate some of the use cases enabled using subscriber session staging architecture. This work was done in collaboration with Vodafone, BiSTN, and Intel. This is lab setup to demonstrate subscriber session staging for BNG service implemented using CUPS architecture. The setup consists of three Intel Xeon Gold 633A10 CPU systems, which have 32 cores per socket as specified in Intel Select Solution Forwarding Platform, one P4 programmable Intel Tofino switch with 64 100 gig ports, and one top of the rack switch. We have also used Ixia traffic generator to simulate the traffic coming from access and core network. Each server platform has 2 by 100 gig. Intel E810 series network adapter that features dynamic device personalization technology to support frame classification of load for new protocol packets. Two servers are assigned to run cloud native VPP based PNG user plane instances that are deployed using Kubernetes orchestration engine. These user plane instances are responsible for forwarding subscriber traffic received on access interface to the core network and vice versa. A single BNG user plane instance can provide throughput up to 20 gigabit per second, and we can scale up the throughput with multiple BNG user plane instances using 32 cores available on each of the two CPU sockets. The third server implements three control plane components. The first one is BNG control plane that performs subscriber authentication, authorization, and accounting management function. It also assigns IP addresses to the subscribers and performs subscriber management functions related to subscriber registration and deregistration. In addition, it sets up the subscriber session forwarding state on the user plane instances over UPFCP interfaces. Second component is user plane selection function or UPSF. UPSF anchors the subscriber session context to the BNG user plane instances based on operator policy. For example, in this demo, we use even distribution of subscriber sessions across the user plane instances. UPSF also maintains a database to store subscriber session context, their mapping to BNG user planes, network connection information between TSF and BNG user plane instances. The third component is control plane for traffic steering function. This control plane programs subscriber traffic steering rules on the switch over gRPC interface. The last component is traffic steering function, which is implemented on Intel Tofino P4 programmable switch. It directs the subscriber traffic from the access network to the specific PNG user plane instance identified through the steering process and in the reverse direction from BNG user plane instance to the access node. On boot up, UPSF establishes VXLAN tunnels between TSF and each BNG user plane instance. The tunnel endpoints information is provided by BNG control plane and TSF control plane when they register user plane instances and TSF instances with UPSF respectively. In the first demo, I will show load balancing of subscriber sessions across active BNG user plane instances when subscriber connect to the network. For every new subscriber session request, BNG control plane sends a user plane lookup request to the UPSF. UPSF then identifies the user plane based on defined policy. For example, in this case, lowest loaded user plane instance and send the response back to the BNG control plane. BNG control plane then completes the session setup procedure and creates the, the forwarding state on the BNG user plane over PFCP interface. 
UPSF also sends session update message to the TSF CP, which in turn performs the required configuration on TSF switch to steer the subscriber traffic to the VXLAN tunnel connected with the requested BNG user plane. This is Grafana dashboard that displays real-time information about number of active user planes, subscriber sessions, network connections, and TSF. At the moment, 10 BNG user plane instances are up and running. A table on the right side shows service groups supported on the user planes. All user planes supports basic internet service. User plane 1 and 2 supports edge compute, while 3 and 4 supports enterprise service. Now on the tester side, I'm going to start 2000 new subscriber session. These session requests are generated for basic internet service. As we can see, sessions are getting set up. Now on dashboard, we can see subscriber sessions are load balanced across 10 user planes as all of them supports basic internet service. Now all 2000 sessions have been set up and each user plane has got 200 sessions. Next, I run data plane traffic from the tester towards the 10 user plane instances. And now tester is generating access and core network traffic. And we can see that packets are processed by uplink and downlink pipelines and sent back to the tester. In the next demo, I will show service-based BNG user plane selection where new subscriber sessions are steered to the BNG user planes that deliver the required services. Subscriber sessions demanding the particular service will be distributed evenly across user planes offering the same service types. One thing to note here is UPSF maintains a list of services that are available on the BNG user planes and refers this list to assign user plane instance when it receives lookup request from the BNG control plane. The new session setup follows similar sequence as described in the previous demo, but in this case, User plane lookup request from BNG control plane includes the service group ID requested by the session. UPSF then identifies the user plane instances that support the requested service group and select the lowest loaded instance. In this part of the demo, we consider a scenario when subscriber would like to connect with the edge compute service, which is supported by user plane one and two. Now, from the tester side, I will start session setup procedure for 200 new subscribers and sessions are coming up here. On the dashboard, we see new sessions are getting assigned only to user plane 1 and 2 as they support edge compute service. Both user planes are receiving an equal number of sessions due to load balancing policy. And now we can see user plane one and two have got 100 new sessions. Now I will repeat the test with another 200 subscribers, connecting them to an enterprise service which is available on user plane three and four. Now I start session setup procedure on the tester side and sessions are coming up. On the dashboard, we can see new sessions are getting assigned in a balanced way to user plane three and four, which supports enterprise service. At this point, user plane three and four have got 100 new sessions. In this demo, we consider field maintenance scenario when one user plane instance has to be shut down for new feature addition, bug fix, or any other operational reason. This would require moving active subscriber sessions to another user plane offering the same service type. UPSF here follows make before break sequence. First, it identifies another in-service PNG user plane which can support the currently active subscribers. It then sends session update message to BNG control plane to install affected subscriber session states on the newly selected user plane. Once all the subscribers are moved from under maintenance user plane 
to the newly selected user plane. UPSF notifies the TSF CP to redirect subscriber session traffic to the new PNG user plane. In this demo, we execute a simple command on UPSF to put one of the user plane in maintenance. UPSF shut down user plane instance 7 now. And we can see here all the subscriber session active on user plane 7 has been moved to user plane 5 and user plane 7 has been set to inactive state. The demonstration of the use cases shows that subscriber session staging architecture enables a flexible and dynamic broadband access network where subscriber can be load balanced across the network. They can connect to the service edge that deliver their service needs. They can seamlessly move away from the user plane that needs maintenance.